you're not on either, so don't worry. Here we go. Here we go. All right, there we go. Good evening, and thanks, as always, for joining us here in Week 6. Capping off Week 6 here at Richmond in the Silverback Series. Two great races so far. I'm Greg Olenek, joined by Brandon Domain, and you know how those Windows updates go. They reset all of your settings here, so it's good for the first two races of the season, or the week here, but third one got me here tonight, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, well, we got the uh, Windows update, and now we got the, uh, the Short Track update here in the Silverback Series, which... Traditionally, it's either been really good racing or a little bit of some heated racing. So we'll see how that one goes tonight. But if we do get some racing, some green flag racing out here, Richmond, difficult track to make some passes. Kind of what we've seen a, a few times here uh, over the years at Richmond in real life, as well as when we've come here uh, past couple seasons. So uh, it's going to be interesting. I think qualifying going to be really important out here for these guys. But we're going to see a lot of aggression out on the racetrack tonight. Yeah, just over two minutes left in qualifying. So let's go ahead and show you those standings here in the Silverback Series. Joshua Balliet still out to a healthy lead over Jacob Manning, 15 points there. Vincent Cortez there in third, tied with Joby Ray, who has two wins now after last week's win in that exciting race at Atlanta in set three, counting out or rounding out that top five here. Nathan De La Rosa and Jeffrey Ratke right there on the bubble and a really narrow margin here, so a lot of guys still in the mix. Yeah, I mean, you look at that one-point margin behind that cut line, but you also got six points back Cole Sacchetti, six points back Kyle Spees, seven points back Zach Deutscher, and then Logan Joyner getting red hot as of late at 14 points back. So below that cut line, there's a lot of guys that are right on the edge of moving their way in. Yeah, so keep an eye on some comers and goers here, especially once those drop weeks start taking effect here. That probably will go around week nine or ten once those start counting here. But let's take a look at last week's team results. Close match there between Bobby Anderson and Blackout with Barr getting the win. Tank Racing taking on MRMS. That's Murray Reedy Motorsports. They got the 16-point win. JW with the W over Highline Racing and Phoenix Virtual Racing, the highest-scoring team last week, beating JBR 122 to 87. So let's take a look at those standings here in the Silverback Series. And look at this, Brandon. Four and one teams in the one two slot, separated by five points. Yeah, that says it all right there. How good that those top two teams are, JW and Tank. And then remember, that's the top two teams go to that, that uh, three race series at the end of the season. And then there's a third place match as well between third and fourth. That one, a complete toss up at this point with everybody within one game of each other from third all the way down to eighth. Yeah, we got to figure out what to call it. feels weird calling it a game. We'll say race, I yeah. guess, for now. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it works. Yeah, uh. we'll, we'll figure it out here. But uh, still feeling it out as it's pretty new here. But the week six matchups, Tank taking on Highline Racing. Phoenix Virtual Racing going to try and go 500 up against Bobby Anderson Racing, who's looking to keep that streak alive after getting that three-point win last week. JW Racing going up against JBR and Blackout standing out against here against Murray Reedy Motorsports. So good matchups up and down the board here. They yeah, certainly are. I mean, we got a, the, those teams that are, you know, high line JBR. They're kind of sitting there near the bottom of those standings. They got to make a move, but they got some stout competition today. It's a good opportunity for somebody like a PVR or a bar uh, to kind of in that match against each other, maybe get a little bit of separation over the pack as well. Yeah, so the guys starting to grid up out there. Got a quick shout out for Butt Kicker here. Go check them out. It's the perfect time of year to do it with Christmas or the holidays coming up. Go ahead and get your sim racer in your life. Something pretty cool here. A good piece of equipment. Go ahead and check them out at buttkicker.com. Also, while you're at it on the interwebs, go ahead and check out morethanacape.org. That's TJ's team foundation. A fantastic foundation that helps out with families dealing with pediatric cancer. Yeah, tremendous cause there with TJ's team. They do a, a just amazing work and, and kind of one of the quieter things that you don't hear a whole lot about while families are, are trying to help out their child going through a tough battle. They just kind of help take care of the bills and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that'll go a long, long way, especially this time of year. Yeah, absolutely. So just a few more guys to grid up here 
And Jovi Ray, after his win last week in Atlanta, picking up right where he left off on the front row. Cole Martin, he was also running up towards the front there, had a not as good a finish as he wanted last week. But that's your front row here tonight. Craig Lautenslager and Joshua Susi. that's going to be row two. In row number three, it's going to be Max Service and Austin Reedy. Row number four will be Adam Pettit with Seth Reed, who was out of the drivers in the field tonight, the highest finisher the last time we came to Richmond here in the Xfinity Series. Adrian Schumacher and Cole Sacchetti will make up row number five. And in row number six, Kyle Benson and Joshua Balliet, our points leader. Yeah, go on through the rest of the top 20 here as the guys go on by Jackson Wade, Devin Zimmerman, row seven, Michael Larch, Logan Truitt, row eight, Josh Siegfried, and Jacob Manning in row number nine. And you got Ben Park and Jeffrey Ratke. That's going to be your top ten rows here this evening. A big field, 42 cars. And I always ask, Brandon, who you got before we hear go before we go green here? <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, I uh, keep looking through this, and, and I mentioned the highest finisher last time we were here, Seth Reed. I think he's due for a nice result here tonight. I, I got to go with that man in the 51. I like it. Oh, looks like the pace car is going to stay out here as he's trying to rush through there. Forget they do two laps, but it's a good pick. Seth Reed definitely do after, you know, I think he won the most races here in the Silverback Series last season. So trying to get on the board here this season. Going with someone who may have just come back recently here. I've raced with this man at Richmond a lot. He's looking fast out there. I think Adam Pettit might get his first win here in SRN and good spend a good time in Victory Lane. Why not? So that's my pick here tonight. And hey, it's throwback weekend too. We got a lot of cars to go through, so we'll be checking that out through night through the night as well. I got a couple of them right there on the front row with Joe V. Ray. Uh, you can call those a bunch of different schemes. And then you got the uh, Ricky Bobby throwback there for Cole Martin on the outside. Yeah, who doesn't love Ricky Bobby? But we are green here at Richmond. That Silverback Tag Solutions green flag waving for the first time here tonight. And right off the bat, these two friends racing hard. Cole Martin going to take the top position away from Joe V. Ray. So the 10 going to come around to lead the first lap. I was going to make some kind of a movie reference there, but I know we've had copyright issues in the past, so oh, yeah. I'm not going to go that it's route just in call. case. But, <laughs> but Cole Martin with a nice jump here on lap number one. This is going to be the first time they're really taking turn one at speed. And the, the difficult part about this racetrack to me is turn two. It tightens up as you work your way around there. But everybody with a good balance around turn two haven't seen any issues thus far as they work through the wider open, the more wide open three and four. But we got trouble out on the racetrack. Sure, dude. It looks like it's Bo Tiffany in that 49 machine. And I've seen a few other drivers involved as well, looking like Nathan De La Rosa. He's going to have some damage. Michael Lamenti as well. So we'll try and queue up an admin box wreck replay here, figure out what happened. As everybody all stacked up here still early, not a lot of separation out on the racetrack. So we got the 66 and the three side by side. We know the 66 was a little bit behind this. It actually a little bit higher up there. It looks like Corey Stahl and the 45 of Daniel Keith Jr. get into it. And that kind of got a little bit more backed up and uh, deeper through the field. As you saw, that's where Nathan De La Rosa got involved there. I think that was just everybody starting to check up to try to avoid the trouble in front of them. Yeah, so this is going to be Kyle Spees here in that black 25. So he's behind all this, it looks like. Yeah, he's just going to come to a stop. So, yeah, not much else besides what you just saw right there. And uh, I think for the most part, these guys are going to keep it clean. Not too much damage on any of these cars. Yeah, I think the one that might have got it the worst was Daniel Keith Jr. there getting kind of pushed up onto the outside and, and getting into the wall a little bit. But I still I don't think that's going to be too significant of damage there for that 45. Not really going uh, at a crazy rate at that point. Looks like it's good on the left side. A little bit of bent up there in the rear, actually. You can see that spoiler kind of bowed out. So that might have a little bit of an effect here. It's still a short track, yes, but do need some good handling around this racetrack because they are going faster than most short tracks on the circuit. So he's going to quickly bring it down pit road, and I think that we might be going green here next time by. Probably have shorter pace laps here with not too many drivers. A lap down, nobody 
a lap down at this point. But Cole Martin gets out to the front and gets that quick caution leading laps here early on. Going to be a good cause for the 10 machine. Just behind him, the pole sitter, Joby Ray, Lottenslager in the 99. And not too often, this is pretty cool, man, you get a Tony Reigns throwback out there. That was one of the things I was thinking when that got posted in the uh, the League Discord channel. It's like, man, I haven't heard of Tony Reigns in a while. It's a <laughs> bit of a throwback name there, but you definitely don't see a Tony Reigns paint scheme show up, and that's uh, kind of reaching for the deep cuts there, and I kind of appreciate <laughs> yeah. that here for Austin Reedy. That's a good-looking car, man, and hey, you know, I, I appreciate it as well. So good looking machine and looking fast so far up two positions quickly there and uh, picking them off but looking like the pace car lights are off and we're going to get this thing back underway everybody getting off pit road nobody's still repairing anything so we're going to be back racing here shortly yeah short track short cautions here so far on this one uh you're, it's not going to take too long to work their way around this racetrack either under caution 50 seconds a lap it'll go by fast so coming around in the Geico restart zone right there with the Silverback Tax Solutions. Green flag back out here in Richmond. See everybody trying to make that late apex through turn two. One into the wall. Wasn't quite sure who that was. That actually might have been Seth Reed. It looked like in that Mario Brothers car, which... That's one of my favorite paint schemes out here tonight, but I think he kind of caught the wall coming off of turn two. Not too bad. Kept that thing in line. And I think he only fell back. He didn't even fall back a spot, so he's still holding that eighth spot, but trying to hold off Cole Sacchetti there in the Coy Gibbs throwback, uh, the number 46 car, trying to take that inside line here. That the race for eighth place just in front of them. Adam Pettit, Max Service racing for sixth and seventh. Yeah, looking like Adam Pettit with the preferred line there. He's going to take six away from Max Service and gets a little bit of clean air in front of him the top five breaking away a little bit though led by cole martin so let's see what other battles we got going on the jimmy johnson throwback of jacob manning here looking fast and why not with how many times he won in that hot rod he's to the outside of adrian schumacher so two drivers with wins here this season battling mid-pack yeah, and this is going to be tough for them starting in the, the midfield there. You got uh, 18th place start for Jacob Manning, a 9th place start for Adrian Schumacher. He's falling back now a good bit here, a handful of spots. Uh, but that's a tough position to be in. We've talked about how notorious Richmond is for being difficult to pass. Uh, I think if there's going to be a long green flag run, that might make it a little bit easier because you're going to get some guys that are going to be comers and goers based on how they abuse those tires. But early on, everybody at the same rate, just real hard to make some of these passes out here. So that's going to be a challenge for these guys that started in the middle of the field. Yeah, and realizing I made a mistake there. Uh, he won a duel, Jacob Manning did, but plenty of wins here in SRN, so a great battle back there. Great battle right here, too. Seth Reed trying to make this outside lane work, which is working, but it's kind of surprising to see how many drivers are using it. I mean, look at the momentum, but it will eat your tires up here in a hurry, so got to pick them off when you can and do it quickly. Otherwise, it's going to hurt in the long run if we do have a long run. Yeah, he's going to want one of those invisibility stars for the, the tires there yeah, in that 51 nice. Mario Brothers car. Uh, but it's it's going to be tough. And, and one thing that's working for him, though, when they come out of turn two, they kind of start angling in. Uh, I mentioned that late apex. They start kind of doing a, a second little turn there because of that tighter radius. And what that's doing on that outside line, he's able to kind of scrub off a little bit more room away from max service on the inside. And that's making him a little bit uncomfortable there on exit. And that's where it was working for Seth Reed to uh, complete that pass on the high line back here ben park to the inside of the 47 that's cody neal looks like he's in either a daryl walter or you could say a dale jr throwback as well so newcomer cody neal trying to hold off ben park he's been running pretty good this year in srn in both series in the xfinity series or silverback series and the tj's team truck series having a good year overall yeah, nice consistency for him. Uh, he's having a really, really good season in the truck side. Obviously, still sitting in the top five in the point standings there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he, he's 
I think it's just seat time, getting comfortable in the league. He's been running a lot of races over the course of last season and this season. And all that seat time, even with the new scheduling where it's different tracks for each series, that just kind of helps you out a little bit more, getting comfortable racing against real uh, real racers uh, consistently over the course of different leagues. And you're also just kind of getting into that rhythm every single time. Gives you that little bit of confidence. Max Service, Kyle Benson battling side by side. Max trying to utilize that high line that was just used against him there by Seth Reed, but Benson holding strong here on the inside. Yeah, Kyle Benson and the uh, the Rick Mast throwback, if you want to go way back there with that Hooters paint scheme, trying to make that inside line work. Max Service, you said it. He had it used against him, seeing how he can take advantage of that high line and seeing if he'll have the same success that Seth Reed did and it just doesn't look like Max is as comfortable on that high side as Ooh. Reed is. He got a good run coming off of two, nearly making a little bit of contact there. He might be clear this time coming off of turn four. It's going to be tight if he can get that run. It's still going to have Benson right there just on that left rear quarter panel just a bit, but he'll, he'll clear him here in one and two. Yeah, and Service has that teammate in front of him. That's Joshua Balliet, the points leader here in the Silverback Series. He's running ninth currently up three positions and that beautiful Kurt Busch throwback man he back season back when he was winning championships for uh Roush well what was Roush racing and now Roush Fenway racing uh it's a cool throwback yeah hey we'll, we'll, uh, even another team name change Roush Fenway Kozlowski oh, yeah. racing like Can we got all up. the different teams yeah there's way more uh, team names there uh you but yeah throw no, your name in the mix bar. Yeah, why not at this point? Oh, we got one down into the inside. That's Joshua Susi. He got uh, turned around there just a little bit. Did a great job saving that, but he's going to fall back quite a few positions here in that 53 car. Yeah, he falls back to 12th and has Logan Truitt to his outside. He's going to go on by there. Gets the job done. I know this car looks familiar, and it's frustrating me that I can't remember what this throwback is to, but, Brandon, you're going to have to I want to see. I want to say it's just one of the GTO uh, road series cars. Oh, right. uh, so I think it's it's kind of just a, a throwback to road racing more than anything out there. Here he is. So Logan Truett having a good night up four positions up to 12th now. He's got Jacob Manning making a move to the inside of Kyle Benson now. Benson falling a little bit through the field after that battle with Max Service. The 50 up seven spots so far. So using that old 48 Lowe's machine power and it's paying off here tonight. Whoa, gets real close to max service there. Has to kind of let out a little bit to not make contact with the 81. That could have been nasty for both of those drivers. Yeah, and this, I got to tell you, I'm really impressed right now. We're sitting here closing in on 20 laps into this run. It's really kind of shortening up this race a good bit, how fast they're getting through this. We're already a sixth of the way through this race, of, uh, actually a fifth of the way through this race. And Cole Martin's starting to hit some lap traffic now as well. He's got some damaged cars in front of him. Got some guys that are just a little bit off pace as well. This is where this race is going to get really interesting. Yeah, so right on board, you can see four or five cars just in front of him. That's... Nathan De La Rosa, who was caught up in the trouble earlier on, so he is off the pace. And Daniel Keith Jr., not far in front of him. You see Cole Martin with a good run here. He's going to go right to the inside and make the move, put Nathan De La Rosa a lap down. So De La Rosa in 37th is going to leave 36 cars on the lead lap currently, and he's going to start ticking off here as the laps stay green. Yeah, and, and one thing to keep in mind, too, as these laps continue to tick away, we're looking at about 85, 90 laps of fuel mileage on these cars. Now, obviously, with a 120 lap race, you're not necessarily thinking that you got to go 90 laps out there. So at what point, if this thing stays green, do people decide that they're going to turn it into pit road? They're going to try to break this race up in half, go 60 and 60, or are they going to try to kind of take a different strategy around there? You also got to keep in mind here, green flag pit stop, you're going to go and lose about two laps to the field out there and oh, we gotta just throw all that away. Jeffrey Racky. Circuit City throwback. That's a cool one there, but not looking Damn. good. After the second caution of the night here, I'm thinking a few other drivers caught up in that one as well. 
Yeah, that's a pretty uh, pretty decent damage there to that eight car. Not sure if we'll say that's a Jeremy Mayfield or a Hutch Strickland or there's a plethora of drivers that drove a Circuit City car over the years. But either way, those were some pretty cool paint schemes there. Looking like Josh Marcy uh, might have been involved as well. But let's queue up the admin box rec replay and find out exactly for ourselves here. Take a look from the blimp cam. There you see those two drivers, the 8 and the 35, side by side. But there's some contact in front of them. Ben Park oh. with the 69 of Jackson Wade. And that's going to be where all this starts. Yeah, then once you had that, you had Jeremy Little get caught up in that one as well. And that 26 car on the outside. So you got Jackson Wade in the 69, the Carl Edwards throwback. You got Ben Park in the 4. And like you said, that's where this one starts. Coming off of turn 4, Wade coming up. Just a little contact there, and I don't think anybody really did anything wrong on that one. They just kind of met in the middle on the exit of the turn, and that launched the four up into the wall, and he just backed up, and there was really nowhere for Radke and the eight car to go, and that just chain reaction wreck after that. Yeah, the way the car shoots up, too, a little bit funny there, but yeah, absolutely nowhere to go, and Jeremy Little getting a little piece of that as well. He said before the show started he was feeling like he might have a shot here tonight but may have a little bit of damage after that one yeah he's one of those short track guys that that likes being out here uh, just uh i think his qualifying positioning did not help him there as uh kind of got martin to the back of the pack i think he got a little bit loose on his run and that's going to hurt you here in, in a track like this and uh, you can see the the uh the detractor, detractors of that. If you get out in the back of the pack, you're just going to get penalized at some point by the action out here. Yeah. So Kyle Spee's not coming down pit road. He's going to be your leader. Cole Martin out of the cars who did. He's going to come out in first. But we're going to step aside real quick here on lap number 30. Run a quick commercial break and come back with our fourth restart of the night. Want to be a part of an established league on iRacing? A league that's competitive, fun, and above all fair, look no further than Speed Racing Network. Originally known as Mid-South Madness, SRN has evolved into a league that can bring the best out in any given driver. Drivers work their way up through the ranks to hopefully one day call themselves a champion of Speed Racing Network. If you're interested in joining, don't hesitate to reach out to league admins to claim your spot today. Maybe you'll end up in the history books. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor in Speed Racing Network, feel free to head over to www.speedracingnetwork.com and reach out to an admin today. And as always, remember to go faster. Silverback Tax Solutions specializes in dealing with IRS tax problems. If you are receiving threatening letters from the IRS or if the IRS has placed liens or levies on your property, Silverback Tax Solutions can help you find relief. We have worked with hundreds of people to resolve their tax problems. If you're behind on filing your taxes, it's never too late to get on the right track. Silverback Tax Solutions can help with that also. Don't let another night go by where you lose sleep worrying about the IRS or your taxes. Head over to www.silverbacktax.com or call 662-996-4357 and contact an enrolled agent today. We can help you gain peace of mind and deal with those problems for you. Back out here, the guys gritting back up to get this thing kicked back off. Man, we had a good green flag run there, some really good action. But Kyle Spee's coming back down pit road. That's going to put Cole Martin back out in front of this thing as that Silverback Tax Solutions green flag back waving here in Richmond. Austin Reedy just behind him, followed by Jovi Ray. Yeah, nice breakaway from the pack there for Cole Martin. I think Austin Reedy going to be clear of Jovi Ray. He is, and getting pretty single file all the way back until you get to Joshua Balliet and Cole Sacchetti, I believe it was, racing for 7th and 8th. So pretty solid straight line here for a lot of the field. Now once you get about mid-pack on back, that's where they're still side-by-side. -side. Yeah, lots of side-by-side -side action here in the mid-pack. We'll take a look at some of that action here. This is Michael Larch and Joshua Siegfried side by side. Really cool Robert, or excuse me, uh, it's a Woods, Wood Brothers throwback, I'm guessing, by the numbers on the side. But these two battling it out. You got Kyle Benson side by side with Jacob Manning. And just in front of him, that's the 46, it looks like, a Cole Sacchetti. 
getting passed by Joshua Balliette right now. And he's going to try to fall in line just before Kyle Benson can take that inside line. He will do so, and that's going to be the important move for a lot of these guys here. The inside line obviously going to be the primary line, and you got to protect that as best as you can. The second you got an opening there, if you're getting passed and, and kind of stuck on the high side, you got to be able to pounce on that opening down on the inside line, and Cole did a good job of that, making sure he didn't lose any more positioning. Riding on board, Jacob Manning's number 50 machine here in ninth. Up nine positions and wanting to pick up eight more here to get up to the front, but you can see the heavy traffic. And like I said, really hard to pass here when the only real passing lane after a short run is going to be that inside lane. So he's got to find a way to make a move, but let's see if we can find some other action happen on this track. And looking like Adrian Schumacher mired back here in the traffic now. He's back here in 24th side by side with Kyle Spees, who we saw, I think, lead a lap to get a bonus point and come down pit road. Yeah, that's kind of my uh, my guess as well with what Spees was doing. He did get that bonus point, which is going to carry all the way into the playoffs, but also he's one of those drivers just behind the cut line, despite even having that win in the season opener in Daytona. So every point going to matter. Kyle taking that to a uh, big consideration there. For Adrian Schumacher in the 82, I'm not sure what's going on there. He started the ninth. He's just been constantly just kind of dropping back here during this race. Not sure if he's trying to save tires for a possible long run or if it's just he doesn't have that pace race wise out there that he's comfortable with and, and trying to run around this short track it, it's something that doesn't fit everybody that's for sure well, these two have been side by side for a few laps now i've been watching them jackson wade and cody neal really tight off a of turn two here great battle with daniel bowler just behind him in a caution looking like it might come out lucas lyons He's already on pit road, but he had taken a spill, and that 48 kind of banged up. He's going to go a few laps down here. Yeah, unfortunate there, but does keep the race green with the, the quick toe off of the racing surface, and you see that big single file line. One person you did mention a moment ago was Daniel Bowdler. How about the run he's on, though? Started 38th all the way up to 20th already in that number six Silverback Tax Solutions car. Yeah, he races a scar every week, and uh, I mean, I kind of painted it myself, but I would say almost a throwback to the old Viagra cars here <laughs> with that blue number six. Uh, he, he specifically asked for that. Uh, but yeah, it's a good-looking car, and we're looking pretty fast here. One Little. of my favorite throw. Oh, oh yeah, Jeremy Little moving up. Yeah, uh, We saw him get that contact to the front and started in the back of the field. He was all the way back in 33rd after the qualifying effort, but he's up plus 13 now to the 20th position and making his way through. And this is one of those guys confident on short tracks, so not too surprising to see him making his way up. Yeah, two tank, or excuse me, JW Racing teammates side by side here. That's, well, actually, I'm thinking these numbers are getting me all confused now, Brandon. That's Cole Sacchetti there in the 46 out of Highline Racing side by side with Jacob Manning in a great battle off of two. Nobody wanting to give up any ground here. And deep dive into three for Jacob Manning and that's gonna be the edge there. Cole Sacchetti gonna have to try to close that door in front of Kyle Benson and he's gonna do that just barely to keep him behind and not getting able to take that inside line there. But really for the most part, everybody just kind yeah. of filed into a single line here uh, really all the way back through about the top 15 or so. And I believe that's Michael Lamenti there letting everybody go on by the inside lane there, but you're exactly right. I mean, look at it, single file action all the way through this field. We'll use the turn one entry cam here. Not many battles. You got Bowler taking the pass on the Cody Neal right there. And Jackson Wade, he was side by side with someone as well, but that's really your only two battles out here on the track. Oh, there's one around the far left of the screen right there, the 93, if we're talking throwbacks. Oh, yeah. The old Buckeye bullet Dave Blaney throwback there for Devin Zimmerman in that 93 car. That's uh, I'm a big Ryan Blaney fan currently, and uh, obviously I'll be a little biased towards that paint scheme. That's a good-looking car, the old Amico paint scheme. Uh, I mean, I don't have anything against Blaney, so I, I can't say anything. It's a good-looking car. Uh, <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of the best ones out here tonight. So Zimmerman, he's... Not having the night he wanted in it to this point, but still a lot of laps to go in this one, running 17th. And, uh, yeah, what other ones do we have out here? I'm trying to look through the field. 
Let's see what else we might have that we haven't seen already. While you do that, do have a little confirmation from Lucas Lyons. Engine blew up in that car, and that's ah. why he came off the racetrack. Tyler Murray looking good in this. I believe this is a Daryl Waltrip throwback paint scheme. That thing oh, looks yeah. really good. That's just, I, I like the off-white coloring on it. It makes it look like it's more of a throwback. It just kind of fits out there. That's a good-looking car right there for Tyler. And is this a Kevin Harvick, I'm guessing, maybe? Got a little similarity to it. It's also got some similarity to what he's run over the course of the season, too. So I'm not too sure if oh. that's going to be considered a throwback well, or not. But I see it on the sides. I see the Harvick inspiration. <laughs> But we'll figure it out one way or another. But right now, we got a battle for the lead out in front. Austin Reedy to the inside of Cole Martin. Real tight racing off of turn four. Cole with the run. And I believe you'd see Reedy trying to slow that run down. He gets the run into turn one, tries to send it in there to slide up. He does, but we get a crossover from Cole Martin. That might come in play. He does have the nose to the inside. He's going to get that run down the inside here into turn three as he makes a nice dive in that 10 car, trying to hold him off and, and get that position back. The 13 of Jonathan Beyer kind of just sitting there, and that might be a pick here at this point for oh. Cole Martin to be able to keep away and get that position back from Reedy. That's exactly what it was, but he is right on the bumper of that 10. He knows he wants to get out in that clean air, maybe set sail. Cole doesn't want that to happen, so he is going to play defense here as we get ever so much closer to that halfway point in this race. The lap's ticking off very quickly here in Richmond, Virginia tonight. Yeah, getting close to halfway, and also keep in mind, everybody came down pit road on lap number 29, and what that does, we were talking about it, about 90 laps of fuel in these cars. Do the math. That's going to put them right on the verge if this thing goes green the rest of the way. Very well could go green. I mean, we've been surprised before by these guys, so we'll keep an eye on some of these battles, though. Looking like they might start happening. The 46 not wanting to give up on the 50 here. You can see that, but 50 got Valiette just in front of him. Valiette with a good night up five positions from where he started in that Kurt Busch throwback. Seth Reed just in front of him. Real tight racing here. Got Adam Pettit there, too. Yeah, I saw that 13, uh, Matt Kenseth throw back there for Jonathan Byer. Got loose now into the wall, nearly getting into Jacob Manning and Cole Sacchetti, but keeping it off both of them. Everybody's still rolling without any additional damage aside from the 13 car that got into the wall. And I think this is what's going to start happening, where we're going to start seeing more racing up in the front is when these lapped cars start coming into play. And, and it's just going to throw off the rhythm for some of these guys as they're having to work their way around lap traffic. And it's going to start opening up these opportunities here throughout the field. Yeah, and we will have to question Jonathan Byer, possibly Brandon, you and I, after this race because Sean Griffith claiming to have had lunch with him tonight on his trip to Dallas. We need to confirm <laughs> that he is actually on vacation and not just playing hooky here but i uh, had nothing but good things to say about buyer even though he is struggling here tonight in 30 second the battle for the lead though not letting up by any means now it's getting tighter again austin reedy just closing right back in he lost that lead after getting a little bit of trouble there behind uh the the action going around that 13 cars they were putting him a lap down and that kind of set him right back behind the 10 of cole martin but he's pulling right back up it looks like they're kind of trading off which end of the track they're faster and looks like reedy faster through one and two looks like martin faster through three and four and it's kind of becoming a little bit of a wash over the course of the full lap yeah and we got a battle back here this is for sixth place Valiette trying to take sixth away from Seth Reed, and it's going to be quickly under attack from his JW Racing teammate there, Jacob Manning, right behind the 51. We'll see which lane he goes with, and he's probably going to take the inside as he's had a great run through the field. This will be his 11th position gain if he can get by Seth Reed. Yeah, that's a heck of a run here for, for Jacob Manning working his way through. I think a little bit of teammate cooperation there, letting Reed slide back into the groove there, get down to the inside of the racetrack. Because if Manning got by him, I think Reed was going to fall back a handful more positions all the way back behind the 53 of uh, Joshua Sousey there in the, uh, the 53 car. So I think that would have put him all the way back down to about 11th place. So looking at it's like the top 11 possibly here that has just broken away from the rest of the field and uh, kind of some separation now and looking like we got something going on back here. 
Oh, big wreck there. Handful of cars. Got the 16 of Tyler Murray. Got the 54 car of Nick Helda. Got the 69 of Jackson Wade. I think I saw a couple of others back there as well. But this is going to pick up uh, quite a bit of damage here right at the halfway point for a few guys. Yeah, so we'll queue up that admin box wreck replay as we always do here. To try and figure out exactly what happened. Looking like it may have began with Nick Halda and this 54. Got the 16 of Tyler Murray up. It's put in front of him. So. Ooh, Adrian Schumacher in there. Yeah, we'll try and queue up his car here if we can find him. There he is. So he's beside Jackson Wade. They just make contact, it looks like, off of two. Corey Stalled right there gets by all this. Man, he barely threaded that needle and. Looks like Schumacher thought he might have been clear there and, and was just ahead of the 69, but was not there just yet. And Jackson just nowhere really for him to go unless he was going to slam on the brake and just a rough spot there. And actually already on the uh, the driver chat, Adrian already saying, hey, that's my fault. Uh, so that's uh, good on him for that one. And, and, you know, they'll all carry on at that point. But a lot of damage there for a handful of guys. Yes, and a lot of guys coming down pit road and... When I say a lot of them, I mean pretty much everybody coming down pit road. Joby Ray leading them down with Cole Martin as well. And, uh, you know, Austin Reedy, he's coming down as well. But we had a few guys stay out, looks like. I think one of them is Jonathan Beyer, who's coming around right now. Uh, he would have been. Oh, no, he is back on the lead lap. So, he yeah, he was uh, the, the lucky dog. Oh, okay. I saw him coming around past everybody, so I was thinking he was out in the lead for a second. <laughs> Bold strategy, but no, uh, yeah, he was the lucky dog this time. Top three going to stay the same with Martin, Reedy, and Ray keeping out there one, two, three after the pit stops. And, man, big mover still. Jacob Manning, we were talking about him up uh, 10, 11 spots. He's still holding in that eighth position. See if uh, now that they're all bunched up again, if he can continue that charge. Well, why don't we try and bring him up here ourselves and ask him, Jacob Manning, it's Greg Olenek and Brandon Domain having a great run up through the field currently in the eighth position, man. Tell me what's working for you out there tonight in that 50 machine. Is it the Jimmy Johnson throwback? It must be. I think it's making me feel a little bit magical tonight, so uh, that's that's got to be the reason. Well, we were talking at the start of the race about how difficult this track is to make passes, but you've made it seem uh, pretty easy there. Uh, but I think one thing that might be kind of helping that might be these long runs that we're starting to see. Is that kind of taking you off guard that, that we're not seeing too many cautions here in the first half of the race, at least? Um, I mean, you kind of don't know what to expect coming into these things. So I won't say I'm, I'm thrown off guard, but it, it's, I guess somewhat of a surprise i mean usually these things can go you know caution fest so I'm, I'm certainly happy it's not that way but it has worked out in my favor so far so i won't i won't say it's a bad thing yet well we're probably coming around to take one more lap to go jacob best of luck man and we'll maybe be talking to you here at the end of the night running out of laps to do so so get it done thank you man i'll do my best all right, so Jacob Manning running in eighth position here. And Brandon, he's probably going to have to utilize that high line if he's going to want to make too many passes. So he'll be restarting there in eighth and maybe might be around or might be able to get around a few guys here. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a couple guys really make that high line work, and, and it's it's difficult to do. Obviously, if you're starting on the outside on these restarts, you kind of have to make do with it. I think the only one where you really seem to be comfortable on the outside to a full extent has been Seth Reed in that 51 car. He's restarting on the inside. So uh, it's going to be kind of an interesting restart here. We've seen Cole Martin out in front. He's been really good as the race leader on these restarts thus far. See if he can recreate that or if Austin Reed can hang with them and maybe try to counter him on the outside through one and two. Yeah, should be close to capturing that most laps led bonus point as well. So coming to the Geico restart zone, that Silverback Tag Solutions green flag waving here again. We're back underway at Richmond. And another big jump there for Cole Martin in the 10 car. Saw a couple of cars getting a little bit squirrely there, entering one, a little bit of three wide racing in one and two. Oh, Jacob Manning into the wall. Saw somebody else with him there. I think it was Kyle Benson. Big wreck in the mid-pack. Joshua Susi, big time damage there on the 53. 
There you see are. the eight car of Jeffrey Radke yeah. slow out Cortez there. Got involved. That. Yeah, Cortez. I saw the 42 car as well. Jeremy Little looking like he's got some damage. Yeah, that 26 banged up. Chris and this is this is the the bit of the nightmare scenario on these restarts is we saw that wreck start around the fourth row, uh, and there's the entire field just screaming down that back straightaway into turn three, fastest part of the racetrack going into these turns here on a pretty high speed three quarter mile racetrack. Not many places you can go once calamity starts. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and try and figure out exactly what happened with that admin box wreck replay here. Watch Max service side by side. Kyle Benson, three wide up in front of them. Yeah, Jacob Manning, Adam Pettit there. Oh, wow. And Susie just kind of bouncing off the inside wall. Gets into max service. I kind of, and I saw this in the chat also, right as I was looking at him, I kind of want to ride with Logan Truitt here in that 65 car because I don't know how he went through that wreck. But uh, that was, yeah, three wide racing there. Uh, it was something I kind of caught on that second screen, seeing three wide, and that's not anything that's really going to hold too well on cold tires. So we ride on the roof cam of that 65 car. So Kyle... Wimble in the chat say this is the look, and yeah, that was threading the needle to an extreme right there for that Celica throwback paint scheme for Logan Truitt. So Jacob Manning here, who we just spoke to, so outside of Adam Petty here as they go three wide. They just get really tight there between the 51, 83, and the 50. And really, I don't think any wrongdoing by any driver here in this mix, but... Not much damage for those guys. Everybody else behind them, though, big time damage. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of agree with the call. I believe I just heard over the driver chat that that's going to be ruled as a racing incident. I completely agree with that. That's just three guys kind of just racing tight for the same spot there. Not really much else they could do. Um, they could leave a little bit more space, but it's just hard to do in this restart. And Corey Stahl, big impact. There's Chris Bishop in the 42. Beautiful throwback paint scheme there. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, we're going to see about eight cars get some heavy damage here in this one. And a couple of them being contenders, I think also hurt is our odds of anybody wanted to talk to us under caution again anytime soon. Cause I think yeah. that curse might be back right now. Not a good look right now by us here, but, uh, no, that was just a racing incident. And I think that's a great call and one that we've seen a lot here lately amongst the admins. So I kind of appreciate it, how much they're letting things happen here and understanding you know, some of these things are just racing incidents. That was really tight racing, even though that's not what any of those guys or any of these guys are going to want to hear. As you see, Vincent Cortez is hard on the brakes. He spins out. It's a little damage there. A good hit from his teammate, Ben Park. And I, I mean, it was already a pretty banged up 23 there for Cortez. So I don't think any additional damage added on. Maybe just a little bit there to the left front. But Max Service, you see the left side of that car pretty pretty crinkled up there all the way from the front to the back in the 81 car but just like that by the way coming to the green flag yeah. with 48 laps to go this race a lot by pretty quick. a lot to go through in that caution and yeah it's a good thing because man we've had some great racing so far as that silverback tag solutions green flag back out once again cole martin's been nailing these restarts all night long and that's one of the things that I've heard people that are uh, a bit negative about the restart. Oh, Yellow we already flag. got caution. Oh, big wreck there coming out of turn two. Bowdler See, back Daniel there. Bowdler turned around. He was having a great run through the field. Heavy damage to the front of that six. Uh, he was all the way up to 13th on that last restart after starting 38th position on the racetrack. So an uh, uh, incredible charge through the field, and he's going to bring that six car right down pit lane without even waiting for it to open up. Seeing Ben Park involved as well, and seeing another hit for Max Service, too, in that 81, who's already a lap down. Dalton, Dalton McKinney in the 64, quiet night tonight. He got a little bit of damage from that, too. So let's go ahead, queue up the admin box rec replay once again here, hoping we're not seeing a... Kind of what we saw last night towards the end of this uh, short track racing we've had here this week. 
that it's kind of going to heat up a little bit tension-wise. Right now, we're following Daniel Bauber outside of his teammate, oh, Logan Joyner. Teammate. There. Yeah. Almost collected the... Josh Siegfried, his other teammate, too. So it have been a big moment for their uh, Phoenix Virtual Racing team. Yeah, I saw Ben Park get into that uh, near the end of it there in the four car. So Daniel Keith Jr. in the 45 involved as well. And that is, I mean, you obviously never want to wreck on the racetrack, but that's kind of worst case scenario when you get into your own teammate there. So Kyle Spees with some uh, little left side damage as well. I think I saw Paul Gallimore get a little contact as well. Just want to follow here with Ben Park. You know, Brandon, oh, sometimes you just got to hit the brakes a little bit. I mean, you see Daniel Bowdler spinning right there, and that's going to cost him. That's a heavy hit for that four. Yeah, he kind of got the double shot there. Got it Got it from the car on the right side. Got it from the wall on the inside. and Just a little bit more damage there to that four car. Seeing him kind of be caught up in the follow-through of a couple of them tonight. And one thing you got to keep in mind, it's the short track, yes, and contact's going to happen. But what that is going to do is increase the chances of hitting that incident, count, uh, incident point mm -hmm. count uh, limit there of 17x. A car contact is 4x. You do that four times, you're right on the verge of one more thing, one off track, one time into the wall, things like that. All of a sudden, you're out of this race. So this is something that these guys are going to have to keep in mind as it feels like the intensity on these restarts are really starting to ramp up. So Cole Martin's still out in front. He's got the bumper right there saying, I want to go fast. <laughs> Not doing that under these... Uh, yellow flag laps here tonight. Five cautions so far, though. Still pretty good night overall here as the laps are winding down. So Austin Reedy just behind him, making that Tony Reigns throwback look really fast here this evening. So he's going to try and get by Cole Martin. They were battling not too long ago for the lead. Joby Ray's just steadily been a third-place car, I think, here tonight. I don't know if he has much for these top two guys or if he's just biding his time right to the outside of him that's going to be craig lonslager good to see the 99 up in front here he's in fourth here this evening but joshua baliet and that kurt bush throwback rounding out our top five there we go my mic was not working there for a second as you got seth reed <laughs> on the outside we're one lap to green here he'll be in uh, position number six we'll have cole sacchetti restarting in position number seven on the inside on his outside kyle benson and the number one hooters car will be starting in position number eight jacob manning back down to the inside for this restart and he's going to be alongside adam pettit two of the guys that were involved in that uh caution before this current caution uh they're going to be side by side yet again here on the restart yeah and i don't think there's going to be any ill will between these guys it was just really oh, tight racing and yeah uh, three wide yeah, every, everybody had the they had uh, the permission to be in that lane. They had the runs, so no ill will there. And right off the bat, Cole Martin out to a great jump again. I think he might have caught Austin Reed. He's sleeping a little bit as William Byron throwback. Joby Ray going right by him on the inside. Yeah, that was the big part that I was taking away from that restart was Jovi Ray timed it so well. He got the dive down to the inside, and he's still going to be side-by-side -side with Austin Reedy in that 96 car. So that the race for second Ooh. place. If Jovi can hang on, he gets a little bit loose, and that's going to allow Austin Reedy to clear him going into one. Yeah, very easy to lose the back end here on the exit of four if you're really trying to get everything you can out of these cars. So Jovi going to kind of cool off a little bit, let those tires come in here as the laps are starting to tick off here under green Craig Lottenslager slots in just behind him and pretty much single file through the top 10 here battle back here for 10th though between Pettit and Truett yeah, Logan Truett quietly having a strong night here. He's been in the top 12 pretty much since the start of this race. After uh, starting it in 16th, moved his way up pretty quickly, and he's just been holding steady right in, right around that top 10. So this is a good run there for the 65 of Truett. Yeah, and these two just can't get away from each other here tonight. The 50 and the 46 side by side again here with just under 40 laps to go. The position right now looking like it's going to be the 46s here. Jacob Manning can't hang on. Oh, I think he got into the wall a little bit there as well, coming off of two. If he didn't, it was just a real uh, real aggressive turn away from it there right at the last second. But he's got to be careful here because if he gets stuck on this outside line for too much longer, he's going to really start fading back as this field still pretty well lined up there around that inside. 
Yeah, this is really the only battle through the field as Logan Joyner now coming up into the mix too, possibly going to stick his nose to the inside of the 65 of Logan Truitt, and he's going to do just that. So Joyner quietly making his way up 13 positions so far in that sun drop machine that he's run all season long here for Phoenix Virtual Racing. So great mid-pack battles here as a lot of the guys pretty much further on back probably have some sort of damage and the car not running to their liking here able to keep up with these guys so that's good as oh as we got oh. contact between Pettit and Sacchetti and more contact afterwards as Sacchetti was trying to get the thing straightened out Pettit gets into him and then Pettit gets into Michael Large Large spinning through the grass in the infield we stay green and that's going to be a heavy hit to the inside wall for Michael Large so a lot happening there on the exit of four, but yes, yeah, surprisingly staying green here. And that was not a, uh, a fun lap there for the 83 as he got into a couple guys there. I'm not too sure what sparked the 46 in him having that contact. It was hard to tell from that angle. If it was just a, a late entry or anything like that, that that got that first contact, but just couldn't get away from contact after that started. But back up front, Got the 10 and the 96 still out in front. Only about a tenth of a second. You see it from that back bumper cam. There goes Austin Reedy. Big dive down into the inside of turn one. See if he can make it Woo. stick on exit. They are tight racing through one and two. Yeah, but both of them get good runs off of two, even though being that tight here. And Reedy goes right on by. Clears the 10. Cole Martin going to go ahead and settle in here and try and figure out how to get back by. He doesn't want to let this 96 get away. He goes right back to the inside. That was a fantastic move from Cole Martin with that crossover, trying to take that inside line back, see if he can retaliate here. They're still going to be side by side. Good momentum there for Austin Reedy out of the exit of two, but another big entry there for the 10 to the inside into turn three, going to keep them in it for, for now at least. They're still side by side down the front stretch. That momentum for the 96, though, going to clear them. So for the time being, he's going to go ahead and pull off here, maybe try and get a little bit of a gap. But Cole Martin not wanting that to happen. Jovi Ray just sitting here watching with Lawton Slager and Balliette rounding out the top five. But, man, great battle here as we come to the stripe to start lap 90 and see 30 laps to go in this thing. Not much time left here now. No, I mean, you're looking, if this thing stays green, you're only looking at about 10, 11 minutes of racing left as these laps go by in about 22 seconds. So it's uh, quick racing around here as they already work their way through three and four. And that gap starting to open up a little bit there for Reedy in that 96. He's pulled away about a tenth of a second over the last, uh, after exiting turn two. It just looks like he's got that strength right now. And now he's got the clean air also. This might be a tough task for anybody to work their way around him. Taking a listen to the cars roaring on by here. And you can see just how spread out this field here is tonight. So very much could promote a long green flag run to the end, which could be just what Austin Reedy wants to see. Not familiar with seeing a Tony Raines throwback here out in front of any race. Uh, so get used to Ooh. it because he's looking fast. Savage comment there, but we got the, the 96 of nice. Reedy out in front by almost a half second, though, in front of Cole Martin. He pulled away another tenth of a second there uh, over the past couple of laps. So he's just kind of steadily pulling away as we got side by side here. Logan Truitt going to make the pass to the inside of Logan Joyner, that for ninth place. So a good run here for Truitt as he's uh, continuing to work his way up. Uh, through the, the point standing series, he enters this race in 12th. A lot of it goes with incident points. The first couple of races, he had 29 incident points, was averaging around a 20th place finish. Ever since then, only four incident points, he's averaging around a 12th. So he's got these cleaner runs going as of late, and that's starting to show here on the leaderboard, both in the point standings and in this race. Yeah, and he had a sneaky good finish to the season last season in season three, and having a sneaky good start to this season, I feel like, Logan, one of the better drivers out here in SRN in Season 4, and proving just that as he's up to ninth and getting by a defending champion right there in Logan Joyner. So, see so if he can keep moving on up through the field. 
Speaking of guys moving back up, as we uh, check back in on Kyle Benson and Jacob Manning, they're racing side by side. One car that kind of caught my attention just before we cut away. Back in 11th place, Kyle Spees. We've seen him have a couple of issues out there, but all of a sudden he's showing right back up here into the 11th position and trying to work on that nine car, Logan Joyner. He's got that front end damage that might be affecting the handling of that car. But Kyle Spees, we've seen him kind of sent back to the back a couple of times here in this race. And now he's right back up into the top 10. Our Daytona winner starting to make a charge. Yeah, the car looks pretty clean. So passing a lot of these cars with damage with no problem here. Got a little bit of damage on the back bumper, but that's it. Yeah, stayed out a little while ago to lead that lap. Came down pit road, went to the back. Back in the top 10 for the 25. So good call there. Bo Tiffany also with a good run back up. He was involved in an incident a little bit earlier on in the race. Up. 20 positions from where he's starting the night and 17. So that 49 looks pretty fast here. And that 49 might be the throwback of throwbacks here with the James Hilton paint scheme. We got the, we're, I guess we're going to go with the Daryl Waltrip paint scheme here uh, for the 47 car as uh, Cody Neal and his uh, debut race uh, working through the field. He's actually having a solid run here in the 14th position as he's kind of sandwiched between Joshua Siegfried and the 60, the Mark Martin throwback, and the Dave Blaney throwback of Devin Zimmerman at the race for 13th, 14th, and 15th. Yeah, very well could be a throwback of a throwback. Uh, I don't know, but it's a good-looking car nonetheless and having a good run in a 14th. So back out front. And Gap pretty much maintaining there for the 96, about four car lengths between him and Cole Martin. He's got a little bit of lap traffic. That's going to be Joshua Susie just in front of him. He's had a rough night here, so that car not going to be up to speed. He's going to go right to the inside here at the entry at three, so he gets by easily. This could be bad for Cole Martin, though, on the exit of four. Yeah, he might catch him at the wrong point. Actually, it looks like yeah. Reedy might have caught yeah. him a little bit more at the wrong point. Uh, he was just barely clear, but that did alter his line a little bit on exit. Didn't cost too much, though, because I don't think Cole Martin had a comfortable line either being able to get through there, and he's really not going to have that coming off of turn two. And you could see that gap open up about 15 hundredths of a second as they came off of turn two. So good battle here mid-pack. We were watching not too long ago. Cody Neal making his way up through the field. Logan Joyner. Oh, contact here between Devin Zimmerman oh. and Josh Siegfried. Great job by both saving that one, keeping it straight. Siegfried keeping it off the wall. Zimmerman keeping that car rolling. He's going to lose a couple of spots there after that contact. And a little bit more contact. That's going to throw the 49 into the wall. Jeremy Little goes to the inside. Things trying to calm down here. But we stay green. Man, I thought we were going to get a little bit more contact there with the way the 26 was kind of shoving up the racetrack there at the end of that turn. Oh, loose, loose, loose wow. for Joby Ray trying Cole, to save that nice save. Cole Martin did the same thing too. So both of those guys getting a little bit of heat in those rear tires. Craig Lautenslager to the inside of Joby Ray. The battle for third. And you know what, Craig Lautenslager with a, a tremendous move by not pouncing immediately on that. He let Jovi collect it knowing he was still going to have that momentum, still have that run, because Jovi was still trying to collect those tires instead of bull rushing them and probably making contact with the way that those two were lined up. That was a fantastic job of picking his spot there in the 99. It's Jovi Ray catching the wall off of four. Yeah, so a lot of guys starting to lose these tires a little bit here. Last pitted on lap 62 here, and we're currently on lap 104, so 40 laps on this set. They're going to start going here as things start to heat up here, and they're going to be near the end of that pit cycle once we get to the end of this race if it stays green. Yeah, it's definitely going to be near the end of the tires wanting to be comfortable on this race car. I mean, we're seeing it already. Uh, and I think it's a lot of guys just seeing how we had those quick cautions. And what does that normally tell you? All right, it's go time. We got to be aggressive here. We got to block our positions. We got to keep going and trying to push forward, take every opportunity we can. And what that does is just blow up these tires even faster than they're anticipating. And I think there's going to be a whole lot of guys feeling like they're on ice here in these last 14 laps. Yeah, you just saw Seth Reed get a little sideways on the entry there. So even getting on the brakes, some of these guys, uh, not to their liking as far as handling goes in their cars. So maybe some adjustments brake bias wise can help with the handling here on the end of the runs. Maybe some knobs being turned by a few of these guys to make a late run, but I think Austin Reedy is flat out checking out up to a second lead now over Cole Martin. 
Yeah, and our Kansas winner, he's got three straight top tens here, including that win at Kansas, looking to make it a second win here at Richmond. And, and man, he's just really coming alive. You see him pulling away about five hundredths of a second a lap on Cole Martin. That gap just for uh, just increasing lap after lap. And he does have some lap traffic, though, coming up ahead here. He'll catch him in the next couple of laps. That might be the difference maker in this race. Yeah, a lot of lap traffic out in front there, so that could be worrisome indeed. We'll see if he's able to navigate that, but not too much to worry about for the time being. Josh Siegfried thinking about making a pass to the inside of Cody Neal. Thinks better of it here, and it's going to make a run out of four to possibly get it done here. And good run. The 60 trying to take 12th away. And does just that. Yeah, I think that dive to the inside a little bit early. I, I thought at first it might have been too early for the 60, but I think what it did was it caught the attention in the mirror of Cody Neal, and he might have overdrove it a little bit there into three, and it kind of shoved him up the racetrack. And speaking of, there's the little slide up in front, and then Josh Siegfried in that 60 car going to clear Cody Neal in the 47 and take that position. Well, Cole Martin hanging on right now, but Craig Lottenslager wants that second position here. The Carl Edwards throwback. It's cool to see the Aflac duck back out there. I think this was a pretty good-looking car, that 99 back in the day, but he's got a tough one ahead of him with Cole Martin just in front of him. We'll see if he can get P2. Joshua Balliet not out of the picture as well. Seth Reed falling off a little bit from this pack. Joshua Balliet sitting there in fourth. Oh, wow. Dicey moment there for Cole Martin trying to work his way through the lap traffic. He's going to make it work, though, as they all get work their way through that little pocket. But we got caution out on the racetrack. See, it might Looks like it might be Chris Bishop there in the 42. Saw him off pace on the inside. There's Daniel Keith Jr. as well. Yeah, I'm not getting any hit. Hits for that, so we'll go ahead, queue up an admin box, rec, play, replay, see if we can see what happened here with the 42 of Chris Bishop. The old Joe Nemechek throwback, good-looking car there. Oh, there Happy it is, Ben up. Park and Daniel Keith Jr. See Radke involved, that's where the 42, he was checking up to get away from Daniel Keith Jr., but we saw Jeff Radke and Vincent Cortez get a little bit of damage in this one as well. Trying to find Ben Park. There he is. So he gets a big run there on the inside. and Looks like he's holding it well, and I just don't think he thought the 45 was as low as he was Ooh. there on the racetrack. And just like that, his night's done. Yeah, I'm guessing that was the incident count limit. We've seen him get contact a few times there. So that was probably what happened there as he just disappeared and, and that car out of the race now. Well, we've got some strategy unfolding here, Brandon. Not many laps to go by any means, and we had quite a few cars come down pit row, but we had four, in fact, stay out. Joey Ray, Josh Siegfried, Logan Joyner, and Jeremy Little, four teammates staying out, and there is not going to be many laps to go, maybe three by the time they take the green. They're going to be on very old tires. And also, while we're talking strategy, notice the new name up there just ahead of Jacob Manning and Austin Reedy. That'll be Kyle Benson. Two tires stop for oh. Kyle Benson. So he's going to try a little bit of a gamble as well. Yeah, Manning taking two tires as well, too. So that puts Austin Reedy back to seventh. And Cole Martin, eighth. Lottenslager, ninth. Balliet, and tenth. So shaking up things here. That caution did indeed. So six so far, six to go. Brandon, was this thing staying green or what? Uh, you know what? It, it very well could. I think the thing that's going to be the, the problem is the restart. we got four cars. Yeah, we got four cars on old tires. We got two cars on half new tires, so two tires stop. And then you got everybody on four. Yep. We already know it's difficult to pass on the high side a lot of the time. Think about trying to pass on a third line, and that's about where we are at this point on this restart. So I want to say we're going to get this thing in, and I think if you're a PVR driver up here in this top four right now, you want this to be a single shot at it right now. Uh, but, I, man, it's going to be tough because you're going to have some guys on a lot faster tire conditions at this point that are going to be trying to make that ultra high line work. It's going to be real nerve-wracking out there. Yeah, this could be great for them or it could be terrible for them one way or another. It's going to be exciting for us. I know that for a fact. So if you've enjoyed what you saw here tonight, please hit that like button. 
hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell so you know exactly when we go live next time. Great schedule next week. These boys are going to be out in New Hampshire, so pretty much from one short track to another almost. I don't know if you would consider New Hampshire a short track, but it kind of races like one with the heavy braking. Yeah, you know, it's a one-mile flat racetrack out there. And to just to say two weeks, we'll have Thanksgiving off next oh, yeah. week. So that'll be – Don't come uh, back the next week. Yeah, not not next week. Enjoy time with family on Thursday, especially. But uh, <laughs> unless you're in Canada, you already did that. But uh, yeah, no, it'll be uh, New Hampshire coming up next for these guys. And uh, speaking of Richmond, that'll be the next Cup Series race on November 30th when we come back to action after the Thanksgiving break. Yeah, so been great racing here tonight. I expect a lot of the same for the Cup Series. Brandon taking some notes here tonight, probably. Uh, seeing what he can get away with here in the Cup Series. Had a great run lately, man. I've been proud of you. So. Keep it up Appreciate down that. there in the Cup Series, sponsored by Butt Kicker. But we got oh. a race here. Yeah, that's what I was worried about with the restarts. But Jovi gets out to a good jump here as the Silverback Tag Solutions green flag is out. And it is chaos. Five, Five wide and one and two. And you see the 10 of Cole Martin. He's going to be the uh, the one that takes the brunt of that. Got contact between Lauten Slugger and Little. Little shot down into the inside wall. And they're wrecking into three. So big hit there for Little there in the 26 machine. One of those drivers that stayed out. And that's just kind of the chaos that can ensue when you're on those old tires. His three teammates, it worked out for him, but he just fell victim to a lot of the guys going by. And they saw exactly what happened there. But we'll queue up another admin box wreck replay here with our seventh caution of the night. Yeah, I mean, this, it, we'll see where it, really happens in the back straightaway but this started right on that restart with the tire spin there for jovi ray uh just uh kind of bunched up the field even more than it was already gonna be but once we got to the back straightaway just chaos we saw five wide through one and two at one point here's the restart with jovi ray you see him on the inside line big time tire spin on those old tires unable to really catch that and that kind of backed up joshua siegfried on the outside there's already contact between jacob manning and jeremy little then they got the four wide there's contact between reedy and martin working through one and two four wide on exit no room for anybody and jeremy little just could not get that thing collected that entire time down the back straight away yeah that's what happens when you get those leaders a little bit further back just the aggression really coming out there that's exactly what we saw so getting a request for a Bo tiffany point of view here <laughs> a little bit of traffic in front of them there as you see that four wide not too far off yeah, that is not the look you want to see if you're on board here with Bo Tiffany, but it sorts itself out there for the moment. You're going to see a lot of cars flying here in a minute. Hello. All right, good call there, Lucas Lyons in the chat uh, for throwing that <laughs> idea out there. That was a heck of a threading of the needle by Bo Tiffany making that uh, work and also a little bit of... Uh, benefit there the seas parting right at the perfect time as he made his way around so it'll be interesting to see how this works its way uh out here the four fresh tires still all the way back in sixth with a green white checker looming how aggressive is the 96 going to be colt martin fell back to 10th after that contact lottenslager up to ninth reed in eighth and there's no telling who could come away with it with logan truett also right there in seventh yeah, I think we saw how aggressive that the 50 and the 96 are going to be on this restart and any possible further restarts here because they were uh, getting some cars out of the way immediately going into turn one there. So they're obviously knowing that they're on the fresh tires. They're going to have the grip. The, uh, the question, I think, is going to be if you're Kyle Benson on that outside line, uh, where are you going to go? Because the, the top three right now, First, second, third, all on those old tires. He's on two tires. He's going to be very loose unless those things have equalized qu uh, quickly. Uh, that, man, I, I, that outside line as loose as he is, this is going to be an interesting combination here. Austin Reedy still might be the guy in the catbird seat with those four fresh tires and having all that grip out there. He's just got to find a way to get through this traffic of guys on older tires or mixed tires at this point. Yeah, it could be a big win for Austin Reedy if he can pull it off here, second win of the season. 
Uh, could catapult him to possibly maybe just, you know, maybe smooth sailing for the rest of the season, not having to stress about points too much. But he's got a lot of these guys behind him. Like, he's got to get by Logan True, or excuse me, Logan Joyner here back in 20th. Logan True had also back there in 7th. He's in 12th in points. These guys trying to salvage great runs here tonight to get the best possible uh, points night they can here. And right now they're going to have to buckle those seatbelts real tight because – Base car is off, and that Silverback Tax Solutions green flag is back out here again for this first green-white checker attempt. That was as good of a restart as Jovi Ray and Joshua Siegfried could both hope for on that front row. They both got away pretty cleanly as they all worked their way through one and two. A little bit loose there for Jacob Manning on the inside, trying to keep it off the nine as they go three wide into the three. Yeah, Logan Joyner three wide there. He's falling victim to these fresh tires. Jovi Ray takes the white flag. Kyle Benson with two fresh tires behind him. And Austin Reedy with the four fresh tires right behind them. Who is going to come away with it? Lonslager wrecking Benson to the inside here. He's got the inside lane. Is he going to make the pass? Two tires, four tires, no tires, all in the run, three wide off of four. Wow, Benson gets to the stripe, and he beats Austin Reedy by a half a car length. And that couldn't have been a more exciting finish to this one as the fireworks shoot off here in Richmond. My goodness, we were talking about the gamble, the loose condition when you have those two fresh tires, two old tires, and I guess he got the good out of that one car now, wrecking that thing in three and four, but uh, my goodness, what a call, what a gamble by Kyle Benson, and it pays off in a big way there. The two-tire call moves him out in front of those that came down pit road, and that one car finding itself in victory lane tonight. He is going to have him a, a ball out here as he claims his first win here this season. Didn't think Benson was going to even be a part of season four, but he made it happen. And he is in victory lane once again after a great season three, looking strong here in the midway part of the regular season. Yeah, last week, uh, you know, he had a rough run there in Atlanta. But before that, three straight podium finishes. He's going to put that thing right back on the podium here, this time on the top step for the first time this season. Great call by Kyle Benson, and he made the most of it, getting that run to the inside through three and four to close it out and find the checkered flag. So the Silverback Texas Series uh, race number six, not seven. Got that wrong. So race six in the books here. Kyle Benson, your winner. Austin Reed, he comes home in second. So a side-by-side -side race between teammates there at the end, separated by one-tenth of a second. Jacob Manning gets third. Jovi Ray in fourth. And Joshua Siegfried, he rounds out your top five. It'll be Logan Truitt finishing in sixth. Cole Martin, nice recovery after we saw him get kind of jostled around there on that restart before the last one. He'll bring it back in seventh. Seth Reed will be in eighth. Logan Joyner will hold on to ninth. Joshua Balliette rounding out the top ten. Yeah, Dalton McKinney there in 11th. Kyle Spees comes home in 12th. Michael Large, 13th. Adam Pettit salvages a 14th place finish after a wild night in the 83 machine. Max Service comes home in 15th. It'll be Bo Tiffany in 16th place. Cole Sacchetti will be in 17th. Jonathan Beyer saw him get the lucky dog at one point to get back on the lead lap. He moves his way back up to the 18th position. 19th will go to Jack Johnson with Daniel Keith Jr. rounding out the top 20. So don't ever have to worry about finding Jacob Manning because he's sitting right there in the broadcast waiting booth. Let's bring him up. Jacob, it's Greg and Brandon. Talk to you already once tonight. And uh, I'm just going to say, for my sake, I'm happy to be talking you to you again me. because, yeah, I did, in fact, curse you immediately right after that. But, man, salvaging a third-place finish here tonight. How does it feel to come back from the incident? And, man, tell me about that finish at the end. Uh, man, um, thank God I didn't forget to put my lucky ring on because, geez, that, uh, that, <laughs> that wouldn't have gone my way. Somehow I even got a 0x out of the whole thing, so bonus points there. Man, I don't, I don't think the ending couldn't have, couldn't have been any better. I mean, other than winning, of course, but, you know, it, it is what it is. As long as I didn't spin out and wreck, I mean, I got a top three. I, I got nothing to be disappointed in from, from where I came back from. So, uh, pretty pretty solid run, I'd, I'd say. I, I didn't qualify well, but I, I made it work. 
Yeah, I mean, absolutely made it work uh, getting up here on the podium. But one thing that I want, I want to talk about is we saw all these different strategies. We saw guys staying out on those old tires, some that took four tires. Looked like you took two tires, if I saw that correctly. So what went into that decision there at the end and taking two? Hail Mary. Man, that was the only decision I really had if I was going to try and win it. I mean, same, same thing as Jovi. It's a Hail Mary. You're hoping those guys are going to stay out and give you a big cushion, and it just – didn't go that way for him. He didn't have a big enough cushion. We had that, that next caution, uh, which didn't help him out at all. And he was just a sitting duck from there on out. So, uh, it, you know, I, I could, I could sit here and, and dream about how it could have gone better. And I could sit here and say it could have gone worse, but all in all, I'm happy. So it was, uh, it, it worked. I, I don't know how I can't describe it, but it worked. Well, great job here tonight, and uh, always good talking to you, Jacob. Uh, but before we get on to Turkey Week next week, uh, you got any friends, any family, any sponsors you want to give a quick shout-out to? Well, of course. I got my list of people and, and, and maybe a few additions to that. Um, I'll, I'll start with, first and foremost, uh, Father Up Above being with me tonight, keep me, well, I wouldn't say calm, cool, and collected, but <laughs> – somewhat uh, median in there. Um, and then the sponsors, of course, Rogue Energy. She can use code JW Racing for 10% off. Saloon Door Sports, America can't go with support. Uh, Justin Rideout for making it possible. And, and Cody Williams Designs for being on the hood every week, uh, except this week. However, he did make that sweet Jimmy Johnson scheme that was very noticeable out there. I, I was really hoping I was going to be the only one. But, hey, it, it's, uh, it's my favorite one, best one in my opinion. Don, Deborah, everybody f for watching uh, all the admins for, for being up there during that end of uh, a caution, fen caution fest of an end of a race. Uh, you guys being up in the booth every week, man, it's awesome. Thank you. Hey, we appreciate it, man. And uh, enjoy your holiday next week. And enjoy celebrating a good run tonight with your teammates and family here. So best of luck here. And when you get to uh, New Hampshire in a few weeks. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. All right, that was Jacob Manny coming home, P number three. Let's bring up our runner-up here tonight, Austin Reedy. Bring him on up to the broadcast booth. Austin, man, hell of a race there at the end of that one, although just coming up short in the Tony Reigns throwback. But battling with your teammate there, Kyle Benson, tell me how fun that was. That was, that was pretty fun. Those last uh, restarts were, were crazy. Uh Getting through cars that took two, getting through cars that didn't take any tires. Um, it was crazy. We we're just trying to survive the carnage, and I feel bad for Cole, man. I think we went into turn one, four wide, and I think I doored him, just trying to give the space. And um, it was just tight racing there. I know Craig kind kind of screwed there also. So those last restarts, they always come down to the wire, and these these green white checkers when we get that light race caution. So. Well, hey, I mean, it came out to a runner-up finish tonight. That's four straight top tens there for you uh, here as we get ready to go into Thanksgiving. Obviously, that kind of comes at a bad time momentum-wise getting that week off. But uh, how does it feel with that kind of a run going into New Hampshire coming up after Thanksgiving? Pretty good. I uh, actually did not expect to even be a car in the top five tonight uh, with how practice was going. I thought the car was super out of shape for me in the long run, but um, I think we got tuned in there going in the race and uh new hampshire is going to be a, a different monster i think uh that's one track i, I haven't really run much of it's definitely a weird one they're really flat um high high or long straightaways the high speeds going in there um not really sure the line is going to be there so that'll be an interesting track to go to but the week off is going to be nice get away from racing a little bit and spend time with the family well man enjoy that family time but before we let you go and celebrate your Thanksgiving next week. Got any friends, any family, any sponsors you want to give a quick shout out to? Uh, Team Mirror Designs with the paint, um, and then TJ's team with the uh, great foundation they support. So glad we had a great finish tonight. Wish we got the win, but we're here for the long haul. Yeah, great run overnight overall tonight for the team at Murray Reedy Motorsports. So best of luck, man. Have a great Thanksgiving, and we'll see you at New Hampshire. All right, I'll see you, boys. All right, so that was Austin Reedy coming home in second place tonight. But we got a man to talk to, and I have to imagine this is going to be a pretty entertaining interview here with Kyle Benson. So let's wait no longer and bring up our winner here tonight, Kyle Benson. 
Tell me, man, how's your adrenaline after that wild race with your teammate there at the end? Oh, uh, man, I, I don't know how I was going to do it, man. Uh, you know, took two to make a make a bold strategy call and uh, just all the cards played out right. And I didn't think Jovi was going to be as close as I thought he was and just kind of hoped, got under him, made the pass, man. I'm, I'm ecstatic, dude. I mean, I didn't think I was going to win the race. I had a top 10 car at most. Uh, but, man, it, it's crazy, dude. I mean, it's crazy. Just crazy how this thing rolls. Man, I mean, it, it's just – it was a, a bold strategy call, and it, it absolutely worked there for you with the two-tire stop there, getting out uh, – restarting that race in fifth and getting that quick restart after. But it just seems like things are just going well for you so much right now. This is the fourth time we've talked to you here in the last five races. So, obviously, things getting together really well there. Four top three finishes in that short span. Uh, how's it feeling right now with all this momentum? I know we got the week off here. That might cool that off a little bit. But how's that feeling with this run that you're on right now? Yeah, man, it, it feels good. Um, it just, I feel like I'm actually, you know, having a playoff push this year. After, I mean, the two races at Atlanta and Daytona were not the best, but I mean, with being able to rally off these finishes, man, I, uh, it feels good. You know, I've been wanting to win and now I got it. And I've, this is the second throwback race I've won. So, I mean, I'll take it, but, <laughs> um, and both on the last lap, which is kind of crazy, but anyway, uh, but yeah, I, I feel good. I hope the team's feeling good. You know, we need a really good bounce back week for the team. Uh, we've been a really bad skid, and, you know, with Reedy being up front all the race and, you know, me coming in the win. You know, I wish it was him, but, you know, it, just how these races play out. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm starting to feel good. I feel good. Um, I feel like I have a good, good shot at the championship this year, and hopefully I can carry that momentum forward throughout the season. Yeah, a new man this year in season four, college boy. I mean, he's up here running every every night up front, so why not speak to him every right. night, Brandon? Yeah. You know? It's always a good time, man. But before we let you go, Kyle, and get <laughs> celebrating with the friends and family uh, for Thanksgiving week, you got any friends, family, sponsors you want to give a quick shout-out to? Uh, I got to thank Tyler Murray for making this uh, Rick Mass throwback. Uh, you know, I saw it, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna run it, and Tyler made it beautiful. Made it beautiful as usual, and uh, you know TJ's team uh, for pediatric cancer, uh, just a great foundation all all in general. And you know, every everybody that comes in the SRN, man, I have a lot of fun. And uh, you in the booth, Greg, I missed you, buddy. You know, I <laughs> bet you had some fun, and you know, and Brandon, good to see you again, man. It's 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 been fun a little bit, and so other than that, man, it's about it. Yeah, you know, COVID, birthdays, elections, uh, everything. It's been a busy month for me, but it's good to talk to you as well. Appreciate all the kind words, man. But go celebrate a hell of a night with your Murray Reedy Motorsports teammates. And like I said, have a great Thanksgiving, too. We'll see you in New Hampshire. All right. Thanks, man. All right, Brandon. So just like that, the race in week six comes to an end here in SRN. And I could not have capped off a better week i think week six taking the cake so far as finishes go a heck of a week absolutely out there we saw it at texas uh for the cup series we saw it last night and a, a rough one there for a lot of guys in the short track race last night at rockingham and then here tonight richmond just a tremendous finish a lot of strategy a lot of long green flag runs as well they really yeah. put a great cap onto the week yeah it was a great way to end the week after a little bit of a shaky your truck race like you said and these boys really put on a great show like they always do in the silverback series but that's gonna do it for us and we're gonna take like i said a nice week off i almost put everybody on work uh next week and that would have been no good but yeah like i said please enjoy your thanksgiving with your friends family uh co-workers whoever you're gonna be spending it with i'm gonna be working personally you know. That's all I do anymore, Brandon. But hey, wherever you're at, please, just whatever you do, celebrate safely and uh, come on back in two weeks. We have a great week seven in store for you. But for everybody behind the scenes, myself, Brandon Domain, all the admins, we can't thank you guys enough for stopping by here tonight. Good night and go fast. <laughs>